Welcome back, my dear friends. It's day six of the Advanced Healing Course. And the, this is the lectures on the rays. I'm doing a small lecture of half an hour or so on each of the divine primordial rays. Now, so far we have covered the red ray of divine will, overlit by El Moria, the blue ray of divine love, overlit by Lord Kutumi, the yellow or golden ray of creative intelligence, overlit by Master Hilarion. And today we're going to be working with the orange ray, the orange ray of divine art, overlit by Serapis Bay. Sometimes this ray is known as harmony through conflict. Okay, harmony through or from conflict. Now, I just thought I'd add a little adjunct to the previous lectures before I completely go into the Serapis Bay art ray of orange. Um, the first thing I want to say is the rays do tend to have a primary yang, yang or yin influence, okay? That doesn't mean to say they're solely yang or yin. They're not solely masculine driven or receptive, but they do tend to have a primary yang or yin influence. So the ray of will is primarily yang, the driving force. The ray of love, the attraction of the love, is primarily yin. The ray of creative intelligence is primarily yang. And today we have the ray of harmony through conflict, or artistic reception, is primarily yin. Science is primarily yang. Devotion is primarily yin. And alchemy is kind of a bit unusual. It sort of contains both elements, really. It's the yin and the yang combined as the child of love and will. So today we're going to focus on the orange ray of artist, artistic intelligence, divine art, harmony through conflict. This ray represents the power of creativity in a different format. Whereas creative intelligence is a driving intelligence, it's a driven creativity, the artistic element has a more receptive aspect to its nature. And that's quite interesting because I've known a lot of great artists and studied and looked at many great works of art over the years that I've been alive on this planet. And I've noticed similarities or things that with, with works, what I would call great works of art, rather than contrived works of art. Great works of art somehow reflect the natural and beauteous complexities and harmonics of the universe in different forms. Obviously, there's different structures and sociological conditionings and different um, aspects of consciousness that the artist will embody or reflect. It might be local, environmental, or whatever it might be. Um, nonetheless, <coughs> it does tend that the works which, which, which go beyond the immediate fashions and fads of the day, works that have an eternal nature, um, tend to be received works. Received is the key for artistic intelligence, artistic um, divine art and, and harmony through conflict. It's the idea of opening ourselves to receive the beauty and harmonics of the universe. So it's less about the co-creator aspect than creative intelligence, although there is a yin creative aspect to it. It's different in nature to the yang creative aspect of creative intelligence from my, um, from my experience and, and working and channeled ideas of the rays. So when we work with this ray, the orange ray of Serapis Bay, we are opening ourselves up to that which is beyond the cognitive mind. We're opening ourselves up to imagery and ideas and the infinite flow powering through us to reveal beauty and magnificence. And furthermore, when we open ourselves in receptive nature to such, we may find 
that the conflicting disparities of our own temporal vision, the dissonance and perhaps separation complexes which we suffer from, can, by the nature of this opening, by the nature of this reception, be harmonised, be recalibrated, be reformed, from the man of clay, the man of gold, may appear, or the woman of gold. This is the metaphor. The idea that the fire from heaven, the beauteous, magnificent cosmic rays of energy, when they permeate into this lowered viscosity of this dimension, into this man of earth, this woman of earth, that the earth becomes a light and becomes a picture of the infinite. It can hold within a tear the beauty of the eternal. Our great poets, our great painters, our great artists understood this and often experienced something they call divine madness. Artists are often known to be a little bit crazy and off the ball and that's because they're receiving that power of the infinite. Uh, and and it is in many ways so, well, it is in stark contrast to the limitations that we often find on this planet. And if anybody is having, has neurosis and doesn't have a way to deal with that, then when energy comes in, if it's not properly managed, um, you know, it can magnify the neurosis or can certainly facilitate a healing a crisis or a transition which temporarily may challenge us very much. And artists that like to push the boundaries have often found those issues in them. And it is interesting that many artists display elements which some people now call bipolar or uh, they may have psychotic energies within them um, or they may find they are very much on the edge of sociological acceptance they often breach protocols because the nature of the infinite transcends our own constructs, our own beliefs, our own natures um, within the frameworks of our own programming. So the artistic reception will unlock linear programs because the nature of the artistic ray is like the nature of all the rays, is non-linear but perhaps more so in some ways than the others, in the sense that it is a purer reflection, the pure, true nature of the artistic ray is the pure brilliance of the fractalization of the cosmic intelligence, which is, my friends, deeply imbued with mystery and beauty. And beauty itself is beyond the thinking and reductionist thoughts of the mechanical mind. It is the eternally iterating and variance of the cosmic panorama. Panorama. Without sounding too poetic, because I want to be practical with this, this ray does enable us to open ourselves up to that which is beyond the physical mind or the temporal mind. And that can be only a good thing if it's managed effectively. I will say this again to everybody. The rays are very powerful. They are very, and the level of power of the effects that it has on us is dependent on our level of initiation and practice. You wouldn't put a child at the controls of a jumbo jet, unless you were a crazy person. You wouldn't put a, a new pilot on the controls of a jumbo jet. You might put somebody in with thousands of hours of flying experience in control of a big plane when they've had lots of training. And so it is with the use of these energies and with the use of these rays. You know, we work often with simple Reiki, which is the alchemical ray of the violet, which can begin the process of us consciously working with energy and rays. What I'm sharing with you here through these lectures is the nature and the scientific nature and the personalities and the qualities of the rays and those qualities although I can talk about them with human language go very much beyond the human experience but we have to we're trying to make sense of it through our experience 
which for many people is very limited. So only by the stages of initiation, of expansion and opening, may we eventually connect to the true, or to elements of the true nature and mystery of the rays. Has anybody got any questions about the artistic ray? Lucinda, do you have anything to questions? No, okay, that's fine. So I want to say a little bit more about art. Um, the colour is orange and the nature of the ray is one of revelation. Okay, it's one of revelation. And so revelation occurs when we are ready for it. Okay, hopefully we are ready. The work that I do prepares people for revelation. And in the word initiation comes from the Latin word initia, which means to begin. So after every revelation, every initiation, every epiphany experience, we, we have to revisit all of our previous experiences through the new eyes. And the artist is somebody that does that. The artist in their creations or releasing or their, their creations or channeling of the works of art challenges us. The artworks, if they are effective, will challenge us to view the world through different eyes or to consider again very carefully our preconceived notions about the fabric of reality. Because all reality that we perceive is perceived through the normal ways, through the cognitive senses, which acclimatizes to sensorial experience and the belief structures that are pervade against, that pervade towards us. So we are going through a process of acclimatization as a child. You see a young baby, they're much more open, generally speaking, than human beings who are grown up because they, they don't have the preconceived projections against them at that stage of their infancy. Later on, and they usually, when they get to 18 months or two years old, the dualistic imposition is pushed against them. And it is interesting how many people do shut down their perceptions of the world. They limit themselves, and it's understandable I have no judgment for those people. It's the comfort zone of reality that can be, the reality perceived can be honed and compartmentalised in a form that is uh, ready to digest. And interesting, the revelation of the artist does the opposite of that. It challenges our established notions of reality. It questions the very nature and fabric of our preconceived notions of understanding how we interact with our world and our environment. And that can only be a good thing, in my opinion, because what that does is it makes us look at all the things we do and questioning the way we operate, questioning how we think, questioning how we feel, questioning our responses, enables us to transcend the polarity of our preconceived beliefs. Because if those preconceived beliefs are, for most people, creating and generating or sustaining a world of separation, of disease, pain, of sorrow, of suffering, of uncertainty and confusion, confusion, then they need to be challenged. We need to question the nature of why we're here. That questioning process I accept for everybody is not necessarily an easy one. In fact, for most of us, it brings up challenge. So people often want to shut themselves down. A child will have, generally speaking, their pineal or pituitary glands quite open. The third eye will be quite open. So extrasensory perception, that is sensory perception beyond the five normal senses, it's quite open. So a child will be generally quite intuitive. And yet very often, the peer pressure, the pressure to conform to a world with expectation, the pressure of parents, of society, of schools, of employees, of friends, etc., is very strong and pervasive. And with that strength and pervasiveness, the temptation to shut down the eye that looks beyond, that reveals itself, reveals the true nature of fabric of the universe, the pressure is strong. 
Yet those who take this path of initiation, those who decide that they want to see more, that they want to prepare for the true challenges of the universe, are very often the artists, the mavericks, the eccentrics, the whimsical ones, who often dress with style that is perhaps a little bit off kilter to the established, homogenised uniform of society. And that's why artists are often considered left field, unusual, different, uh, and from my experience, you know, invariably maverick and eccentric. But that's fine because they're representing on the exterior the inner nature of the ray that reveals actually the depths of complexity of this universe. And so I encourage everybody who feels in any way limited in their perceptions and thinking, limited in their understandings, or live a life which they describe as boring or banal, to work with the orange ray of artistic intelligence, to formulate new, expanded, beautiful, symmetrical harmonies from their own dissonance and disparate thinking. It's very common in the world that people suffer from cognitive dissonance. The dissonance is only the result of limitations of thinking or the fact that their polarised thinking creates an, inny, an inner paradox which seems like perhaps an oxymoron at one level of perception. But believe me, people, when we transcend the limitations of mind, when we transcend the philosophical circular arguments, the truth shines through and enables us to transcend the dualistic frameworks, which we have to exist in on a mundane level. Connecting with the orange ray of art helps this transcendent, this transcendence. It helps us lift ourselves beyond the banal, beyond the mundane, beyond the cognitive dissonance and inner irritation, because we are creative creatures by innate nature. We all are. Those creative elements, those elements revealing themselves to us have been blocked in many, many cases, the majority of cases. I also want to say a little bit about psychic awareness. Psychic awareness is very much linked to the orange ray of harmony through conflict or artistic awareness, divine art. It is known that many, most artists are very intuitive and often very, very psychic. They hear things, they see visions. I think of William Blake, the visions of the angels that he saw. His beauteous works lasted well beyond the fads and fashions of the popular artists of the day, Fusely and Flaxman. Because he captured the eternal, he may not have been the flavour of the month in the 18th century, but his works captured something of the eternal nature of things which transcends the sociological expectations of the day, which do change, and they change with greater rapidity than they ever have. Every year, every five years, the expectations, the political and sociological expectations and fashions change with greater velocity than they ever have. And yet if we can work with the orange ray of art, we can understand that beauty is eternal. Beauty is eternal because the symmetrical harmonics of its nature transcend space and time. Space and time are the limitations with which the sociological expectations and protocols of the day sit. When we transcend space and time with our thinking and our perception through the open heart of connection, then we can connect to the infinite, to the eternal nature of things, which isn't limited, limited by any such expectations. Think of the great works of art, the great written works, Shakespeare and others, the great Greek writers. All of them had an, an ability to capture artistically the revelations of the universe in their prose, in their poetry, in their works of art, in their sculptures, in their buildings. Because those eternal works 
reflected the symmetry and the proportionality and the sacred nature of the geometrical unfolding of the universe. The great artist knows this intuitively, understands this and reflects this, not through the limited egoic mind appealing to the fashions of the day, but through the eternal nature by leaving their ego out of the question, out of the process. The great artists are in fact like secretaries of the divine. The great artists produce works that reflect an element that is powering into the planet at the time. Those elements do change through the different cycles, I will say that. The different cycles reflect different artistic rays of cosmic nature that impinge upon the planet. And the true artist, not being, not being imprisoned by the ego, will connect like an aerial to those divine emanations and reveal them in some kind of form that captures their essence. That form that captures the essence is the work of eternal art. And when others see it, they too will have some kind of rapport with that infinite nature and it will touch us. True art touches us beyond the cognitive mind. So I would call upon the works of art to open the art, sorry, the, the, the ray of art, to open our psychic abilities, to open our true nature as receivers of divine information, Dece receivers of divine revelation, receivers of divine beauty, receivers of the infinite. We do have that potential, my friends. And to have help and understanding to be enabled in this capacity, I encourage you to call upon the Chohan of the Fourth Ray, Harmony Through Conflict, Serapis Bay, the great master Serapis Bay, who it was explained to me has moved to the Ray of Divine Art. It was previously managed by the great Chohan Paul the Venetian, who has now shifted. So the different masters come through at different ages within the unfolding nature of human experience to bring different elements and flavours to the ray, to bring different qualities to the ray, and to help the ray be pervaded to us in different ways so that with the subtle proclivities of each of us can be activated according to the nature of the influence of the, through in, the, in different aspects of the space-time continuum. So I encourage all of you to connect to the quantum field. This is the grand resource that sits above space and time. The artist intuitively does this and connects to that which is beyond, that beyond the immediate, and reflects it through a lens, if they're a great artist, through a lens that is not contaminated by ego, that is not contaminated by the limitations of persona that is not contaminated by their own neurosis. And yet their personality may shine through. Their abilities and technical facilities are important as a translator, but they are indeed translators of the divine. And those qualities and skills that they acquire are important and vital in that translating process but they are not the message. They channel the message. And the message or the rays are the rays of the eternal, of the beauteous, infinite panorama, the symmetry and harmonic gorgeousness of the eternal. And that, my friends, is what Ray 4 enables us to do. It opens us, opens us in the feminine to the power of revelation the power of the infinite. Serapis Bay will enable us all to do this. Call in this and you too can enjoy the powers of the divine artist. <laughs>